Good morning. Our sermon today is a continuation of our look at the Ten Commandments found in Exodus chapter 20. I began with a story. There was once a woman named Betty who had a lovely daughter, Susan, and a precious five-year-old granddaughter named Lily. Over the years, Betty had become more frail. Her eyesight was dimmed, her hands would tremble. And so Susan invited Betty to come live with her. That was a hard decision for Betty, but she moved from her home to live with Susan and Lily. At first, everything was fine, but soon Betty began to have more difficulties. At dinner, she would sometimes spill her iced tea or dribble food on herself. She tried to help by carrying her plate to the kitchen sink, but it slipped from her hands and crashed onto the floor, breaking into several pieces. She knew Susan was upset, so she quietly walked slowly to her room and closed the door. The next night before dinner, Susan asked Lily to set a wooden bowl at Betty's place at the table. Lily carefully carried the bowl to the table and she looked at it for a long time before setting it on Betty's placemat. Lily turned to her mother and asked, Mommy, why does grandmother have to eat from a wooden bowl instead of a plate? Her mother impatiently snapped back, because she is old. Lily looked at her mother and then back at the bowl and then quietly, Lily said, we must be very careful with this bowl so you can eat from it when you are old. The fifth commandment, Exodus 20, 12 says, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Ten Commandments were given by God to Moses to guide the Hebrews in the way God wanted them to live. As David told us last week in his sermon, the law established a structure of how we should relate to God and relate to other people. The law helps us to be who God wants us to be. These Ten Commandments are divided into two parts, our obligations to God and our obligations to other people. In the center is the obligation to honor our parents, and it acts as a bridge between each section, linking how we honor God and how we care for other people. Honoring our parents who gave us birth is like honoring God who created life itself. Our parents are other people beyond ourselves, and yet they are among the people in the community most close to us. Last week, David quoted the author Thomas Cahill, who said, The Decalogue changes how people think and feel. The fifth commandment guides us to think and feel in respectful and loving ways in our relationships with each generation. Elder care, you see, is generational. The fifth commandment, like each of the other commands, is both boundary and blessing. It establishes a generational obligation that brings blessing to the entire community. Each generation learns how to care for elders, ensuring then that every generation can count on a long and good life 
cared for by the next generation. The boundary is that we can't just walk away from our elders when their productive years are over. Elders have intrinsic worth and value as persons, not just for what they can produce. The psalmist in Psalm 71 cried out, Do not cast me off in time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. There's a deep need within each of us to trust we will be cared for in our later years. We want to know that we will not be forsaken while we are living, nor forgotten when we are gone. A critical expectation of elders is that their children will care for them as they become less able to care for themselves. Caregiving is the embodiment of God's love, expressing in action the obligations that are established in the fifth commandment. Caregiving calls for sacrifice and commitment from younger generations. It takes time. It takes patience. It often places the younger generation under great stress. And yet caregiving can nurture a depth of relationship that blesses from generation to generation. Elder care must be an intentional obligation of the entire community. We live in a youth-oriented culture that's biased against those who are older. It's a particular problem in many churches. We must be intentional in church to care for the needs of our elders, just as we care for the needs of younger families. I recall three different conversations from several years ago. One couple lamented the changes in the worship of their church that made them feel like they were less important and their spiritual needs were being ignored. They said they felt like their church had been taken away from them. I also went to the funeral of a woman in her 90s. When I didn't see her pastor at the funeral, I asked someone from her church about him. The man explained, Oh, he didn't really know her. He doesn't give much attention to older people. I visited another woman in the hospital who was nearly 100 years old. When I asked if her church knew that she was in the hospital, she said, My Sunday school class and our pastor used to come see me occasionally. Then we got a new pastor. I haven't heard from my church in two years. With tears in her eyes, she said, I think my church has forgotten me. Elder care must be intentional. Mark Green and I are excited about the possibilities of the legacy ministry to grow and to develop the senior adult ministries that are already existing here at First Baptist. We want to make sure our elders are not excluded or forgotten, as in those examples I gave. The legacy ministry will develop ministries that address the needs of the whole person, social, emotional, spiritual, and physical. We will offer different ministries that are appropriate to each phase of aging. Those who are still active, 
those who are less active, and those who have become more limited. Elder care is a blessing to the community. When Scott Boulevard Congregation decided to sell our building, we knew that our ministry would have to be very different. So we sought guidance from God through a ministry offered by CBF called Dawnings, which was led by Harry Rowland, Davida Parnell, and Bo Prosser. In our Dawnings discernment, we were given a vision of focusing our ministry on older adults, especially those who are homebound. We developed a ministry called Church at Home. We took a complete service of worship into the homes of those who could not come to the church, with several people coming to make up a congregation. This ministry blessed our congregation. It transformed our attitude, which had been one of desperate survival, into meaningful and loving ministry. As our more active members gathered in the homes of our homebound, we were all blessed. Older adults, you see, are a blessing in church. They give generously of their time and energy, their faithful attendance and service, and of their resources. They trust that as they care for the younger generations in the church, those younger generations will in turn care for them. So honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. To honor your elders is to care for their needs. Elder care is generational. Each generation depends on the care of the generation that follows. Elder care is intentional. It calls for understanding and purposeful action. Elder care is a blessing to the entire community, not just for children and their own parents. As we care for the elders in our midst, God will bless us. Thanks be to God. For our elders, may we give them honor and respect, and may we lovingly care for them. For they are God's blessing in our midst. Amen.